Hey guys, Yano here, and today I'm teaching you how to make some future bass. I'm going to be going over chords, side chaining, pitching the kicks, and just the basic stuff that goes on with the chorus. Listen to the preview, and then we'll get started. Okay, so now that you've heard that, the first thing you want to do is open up an FL Keys, as it's a great basic plugin to start with uh, building chords, you can just nice and clean mix. So go to the sample set area just here and open up Rhodes. Next thing you want to do is go down to the pan section down here and turn that off, or right click it and hit reset. Right click, reset. So now if we play these chords. Nice and clean. So next thing you want to do is right click on the FL keys here and go to your piano roll. So next thing you want to do, if you want to just jump to a certain zoom section, you just press the shift button and then press the number two. And for me, number two is quite a good setting. Number one will bring you further out and number three will bring you further in. So shift two for now. And let's make some nice chords. So let me see what I want to start with the bass note. We'll go just a standard A for now. Um, we want to do a minor chord for a first one. So minor chords are a lot more dramatic than majors. This is a major chord, this is a minor chord, so let's play that. Okay, let's see. Let's go G. I'm actually going to make these chords go like this instead. And let's see, let's put a major in here. Cool, and then we'll go for another minor. Let's go B as a bass note, and we'll draw on some minor chords. Yeah, I like that. I think we'll use the bass chord next. Mm. We'll go for a major, except what we do is we turn it into a minor by dragging the bass note, bass note down once. Um, so this is more of a wide, that makes this a major, and this makes it a minor. And if we go in here, this is a major, uh, obviously this would make it a minor, but we're just going to leave it a major, turn it into a minor by making it longer here. Uh, makes it sort of just a different type of chord, we'll play all of that now. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So bass notes are A, G, B, and then actually E. This becomes a bass chord once it's pushed wide. So next thing you want to do is actually replace FL keys with um, a plugin which is going to give it <laughs> you know a bit more oomph. So let's put in Silent for the first one. And we'll just copy and paste that in there. Turn the FL keys off by putting it in. To copy, you just highlight the green note across the playlist you want to copy, Control C, click on the next one, Control V, and if you want to take it away, Control X, so Control C, Control V. Alright, so now we have silence in front of me here. Um, in the RAR file that I gave you below is one of my own chord presets, um, and I've called that Future Chords. I made this one myself through Silence, just by messing around with it. I'm very familiar with Silence, so. Um, this is the, what the chords sound like. Oh, let's turn that volume down. First thing we'll do before turning the volume down is we'll just make sure this is the only green highlighted here. Go to your mixer channel by opening it up here. Finding a mixer insert, I'll put it on insert 10. Hit the, hold down the control button, press L, and that will link that in there. Next thing you do is grab the volume slider, and I'm going to bring mine down to about 50%. Actually, let's go 40%. Cool, so you can hear what those chords sound like there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually insert a serum. Uh, if you don't have serum, you can try to find another um, plugin to use. You can use a silent, you can use massive, anything like that. 
Um, I will put all the presets into the FLP, oh, sorry, the FLP will come with all the presets, so if you don't have Serum, um, I actually would advise to get it because it's a great, great program. This time around, we'll right click on FL keys, we'll go with replace, and we'll put in Serum. Now, I know one of my favorite things to actually use for chords is indeed a lead. Uh, let's see where I can find it in here. Uh, this one. Alright, so let's do the same for the channel. So just link only this one, bring up your mixer. This time we'll do insert 11, hold down control, link that in. And bring the volume down to the same level. Turn off the future house, uh, the future chords here by making sure this is unhighlighted. And we'll have a listen here. At a first glance, you think, you know, why the hell would you use that? But we'll bring it up an octave, so Control A to select all of it. Control A, so it was originally here. Control A, bring that up to the bottom one reads A5. And we'll go again. Okay, cool. And now we mess around with this to make sure it fits. So we just play the, the noises around and we try to make it work. to do is to take all of the middle notes and drag that up an octave just to see what it sounds like. I think I'm going to leave that where it is for now, but I will bring this up an octave to make sure it reads A5. So notice that this one has a swell and this one is instant. So what you're going to do here is just find your attack option on Serum, which is this front one here, and you'll see the milliseconds options here. We just keep dragging this back until we find roughly where we want it. And we'll play the pattern. find our tempo range, drag that up to 150. Cool, next thing we're going to do is find our bass. So what we're going to do here is right click on our sampler, or whatever you've got sitting here, just right click it and replace it with a silent one. Uh, in the preset, in the FLP, it'll be, or in the WAV file, there'll be the separate files in there, so we need to find the preset that I've made myself through Silent is the Bass Atmos. Uh, this is basically just the bass which has all the highs cut and the lows are staying in, so you can fill it out with bass tunes or bass pitches and you won't be messing with any of the high frequencies coming in from the chords or lead chords. So first thing we do is link that to its own channel, so make sure it's the only one highlighted hold down control, hit L on insert 12 and bring that down so we'll turn off these two by turning off the green cool, so that they're unhighlighted and now we add in our bases so we know from before that because we had a minor, a standard minor that the first bass chord is going to be here underneath A so the first one is in there, make sure it matches up with the length of the chords same next, very good we know that the other one was also a minor 2, 
and the last one is a large minor so that's going to go up here with uh, the E note there so if we play that bear in mind you only hear that if you've got something that's pushing bass so let's try and move this around so we get a little bit of mids in there you can hear the difference there Very good. No way. The other ones. Oh, we're gonna. What we're gonna do next is. Okay. What we we'll do is we'll go to our gross beat in here. Oh, sorry, into our mixer channel. Click on Bass Atmos so it's highlighted. Go to the first option in here. For the drop-down box. Find gross beat, which should be after all of your standard fruity controllers. You'll have this one because it comes stock standard with. Um, uh, with Fruity Loops. So what we do is we just click on Sidechain. Next thing you're going to do is right click on each of these points and delete them. Those three at the bottom. Very good. Drag this one down to the bottom here. And we're just going to bring this up. So you can have an idea if that comes. It's got a swell on it. We're going to use that later on. What we do now is just for now and just turn it off here. Okay. So let's turn these all back on and have a listen. Okay. What I feel like we need is a pause somewhere in here. So I'm just going to grab my slicing option. If you use the right click, it's going to cut and disappear. If you use the left click, all it's going to do is cut. So what I want to do is, with my right click, right on this third line here, so we're just cutting one beat off, right click, boom, gone. Same with the next option. Okay, now we can do the same again here, with the cut, or the slice, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Then we do the same to the base, you can either use that as well, or you can just bring these in, just like that. Cool, and play again. Okay, very good. Alright. So what we're going to do now is just paste that into the section down the bottom here. Okay, so now we know what we want to do is create that wub style base that you get with um, future bass tracks. So, knowing that our chords have a build on them, we want to chop them up like that. So, get your slicing tool out at the top here and do a beat slice for everything. So, the thick line here, I'm going to be doing a slice in every one of those. So, you can do the same here, 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 and repeat for the rest of the chords in there. If you make a mistake, like cut over the sideways, just control C and continue. Just finish that up. Okay, now listen again. Alright, I've got to reset minor 150. Cool, so we'll just copy and paste that into the bottom one here and make sure to move it up. Just let you know if you have got something in the piano roll and you just click on it, it'll bring it up for you straight away. So, all, all those, control A, bring it up another an octave, going from A4 to A5, and put them two together. Alright, so one thing we are missing is that our bass has an instant hit, there's no swell on the bass. If we do a cutoff swell, it'll be a really mm, a lot harder for it to make it smooth. So what we're going to do instead is do a volume one by adjusting the attack from a start point in here. So make sure you're in part A here for starters. And let's bring this up until we think we have the right spot. Let's just get all the bases first. 
So this is our base lines here, and in the middle in there. So copy those in. Control A, delete. Control V, and then bring it back down to A4. So if we listen to that, it just comes on from after each other. So we'll set it at about four on here. You'll be able to see the values right here. So we'll go another side four as well, or close enough to four. Let's try 350. And then put on one of the chords to see if it works. Okay, I'm thinking that three is working really well, so together. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> now let's move on to our kick. So we'll just name this first pattern by going in here, rename. And I'm just going to put chords in here for that one. Next thing we've got a new pattern. Just press the right key and then once you've clicked on the top here, press the right key and it'll come up to the next pattern. And you want to rename that to kick. Alright, so we'll find ourselves a kick. Um, and the, the zip file that you've got, uh, the RAR file, sorry, that you've got will have the kick that I use in here. Cool. First thing we do is link it to the channel here. I like to put my kicks in the first 10 channels. My Most of my sounds are after that, and my fix and stuff get linked in to 30 and above on the inserts. Anyway, Control L again to link that in. Make sure this is the only one highlighted before doing that. <coughs> and because it's future base, we're going to want to put a kick. Let's see, wherever we want to put them, so this is what we have to decide. What I'd like to do is just control copy the base across to the kick area so that you can mess around with it. And right click on here, go to the piano roll, and let's see what we can do. Alright. Okay, make sure you select pattern up here so we're only playing the base. Okay, what you have to understand is that if you've got your headphones on, you can hear the bass. Um, you'll notice that when I move the kick around to different pitch notes, you can hear the phase of the bass come through, and sometimes it'll jump and conflict with the bass, and other times it'll run smooth. So, for example, if I put it um, on A, you can hear that really awkward miss of frequencies in there. For some reason this kick is pitched good on 5 for an A note. Just works. So now we have to find the next one. They're not all necessarily going to be the same space apart. Next thing to do is set up your kick to make it nice and clean. So now that we don't actually need the bass anymore, we can just control X that to get rid of it. Um, and now we have our kicks in here. So on the mixer channel, you want to open that up, just obviously by pressing the mixer button up here, or if it's already at the bottom, then great. And we want to be opening a parametric EQ, fruity parametric EQ2. Okay, and that will look like that. <coughs> Now what I want you to do is just follow what I'm doing here for my kick. So what you do is on the number one, you right click, go to order, and select steep eight. Bring that one all the way down to the bottom corner, so we can't go any further. Next thing you do is grab this number two, and we're going to bring this across to... Uh, let's have a look. Around... let's go... 35, 36 hertz, and we'll probably set it to about... 10 decibels. Now you'll be able to see up the top corner here uh, anything about the decibel reading. So if we do the 3, let's just move that 2 to uh, 8 decibels, around 35. Um, that number 3 will sit to 100, and, just over 100 hertz, and we'll sit to around about 4 decibels, and then the number 4, actually we'll get that 3 down to 3 decibels. 
and then the 4 set to 1 decibel at around 300 hertz. Okay. Next thing you want to do is just grab this number 7 and go to the, all the way to the bottom corner and just pull back to this first line here. You can see just for number 7. And listen again. <coughs> Without the EQ, with the EQ. Cool. Alright, that's good. <coughs> Next option we want to do is just select in here. We're just going to put on a fruity peak controller. I would normally use gross beat uh, for most of my side chainings, but because our kicks are different in different settings, we don't want the side chain rolling the whole time. We're just going to use the peak controller for here, and just for now, we're just going to turn this off. We we may need it, we may not need it later on. All right, so we're just going to pop that kick in there and have a quick listen to see how we go with that. Cool. <clears throat> Sounding pretty reasonable. Next thing to do is get the claps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find some good claps. They will be in the raw file as well. You should better pull it out somewhere from in there. And um, we'll go from there. So let me just go find some claps and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so if you've grabbed those claps and you've popped them into your piano roll here, oh sorry, into your, into your, you know, all your unsorted options here, just chuck them in one after each other and just put them right in the middle um, for each of them on there. Next thing you want to do is, yeah, paste them into your piano roll or your playlist here. One, two, three, four, just like that. Next thing you want to do is link these each to their own mixer channel because the different of these claps need different EQing. I'm going to do each of them. So next one, control L. Next one, control L. So if we play them after each other, that's linked to that one, that's linked to that one, and that's linked to that one. Together they sound like that. Okay. First thing first, bring down the volumes a little bit. Alright, so now you want to do is just turn each of them off and just listen to them one by one and work away at them. So, open up an EQ2 on the first one, grab this number one, straight to the bottom corner and drag it back until you're at this line here. Actually, we're going to keep going and then number two, you're just going to drag straight down to the bottom. Okay, actually we'll leave that bring this one back to this line here and bring this two across to in between the number one and the wall here and just bring this down to like minus six okay we're going to go right to the end and bring it to the bottom cool that sounds good next thing we do is right click on the seven go to order steep eight drag that to the bottom corner grab our number six go roughly to this line just here and drag this up to at the, around the 11,000 hertz area to about 8 decibels plus and the 5 we'll bring to the 5,000 area and we'll just bring that up to about 4 decibels okay, I'm just going to bring these back, we've got 2 decibels on the 5 and 6 decibels here Alright, next thing I'm going to do is just click on here and open up a Fruity Reverb 2. So we just click on that there. Okay, next thing we do is push. Okay, just follow what I'm doing here. There's going to be a lot of things that's said, but um, I'm just going to go one by one on this until we get it right. So, <coughs> high cut all the way up, damp all the way up. I'm going to go a low cut and just going to go to the second notch just here. There's little notches on them, second notch just there. And on our stereo separation, which is right here, we're just going to go to our first notch. Our wet, we're going to bring down to 40 or 35%. And our decay, we're just going to bring it up to 2 seconds. Alright, and we're just going to bring our damp straight up and down here. Cool. Alright. Now we'll go to our next one. 
this one we're just going to do an EQ, so EQ2. So like we did before, the number one goes to this line, bring it down, number two straight to the corner. Right click on our seven, order, steep eight, just drop that off there. And now we play around with these values until we get them right. Okay, 5000 hertz, 4.5 decibels, and 12000 hertz, 8 decibels. And the number 3 we're just going to push down a little bit, so you see this little spot here right here, there's a little, just right on there. Cool, move on to the next one. Very similar like we did with the last one just there. Number one goes to this point here, number two goes in the corner. Right click on a seven, order, steep eight, bottom corner. And we'll just mess around with these values as well. Actually, that's pretty good right there. So, 11,000 hertz, six decibels, and four and a half thousand hertz, three decibels. And just again here, we're just gonna bring this three down. Okay, drop the volume a little bit, so we're looking at around 65% on this one, around 70, and then 75 here. Alright, and together now. So now if we play it in the mix. Cool, now let's go on to EQing our chords. Alright, so we turn off our bass, turn off our serum. Um, if you don't have serum, then you'll have the wave version, which will have all of the effects on it already, so you don't have to worry about doing the serum right now. Okay, first one. Let's open up in a parametric EQ2, and we'll go ahead and steep 8 on the number 7, drag it all the way down, steep 8 on the number 1 as well. So just around 11,000 hertz we've got 5 decibels and 5,000 hertz we've got 2 decibels and now we want to do is grab this number 1, bring it back to this point right here and bring that number 2 to right in between the two here. <laughs> Next thing is reverb, so open up a reverb too, and just follow what I'm doing here as well. So low cut goes to this notch here, high cut all the way up, damp all the way up. Stereo separation, we're just going to go a little bit in, so this first notch here, and the wet level will go to 30%. Actually, we're going to bring this damp back to about here, and change the decay time to 2.5 seconds. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Decay time back to 1.8. Just going to push that wet level to 40. Cool. Next thing we want to do is open up our delay. So we go to delay 2. Next thing we do is go in here and select our presets. Um, if you don't have this one, then it'll be in the FLP, but actually we'll, we'll actually do it manually. So, first thing we do is grab this volume option here, and we'll drag that to this first notch just here. Same with this volume module as well. Setting our time should already be on 3, as you can see up in this corner here. But set it to 3 if it's not. And now our offset, we want to set to 200 millis, just over, there we go, I think 204 is the closest. After just after 200 milliseconds for that right one. Um, now what you're going to want to do is hit play, hit stop straight away to hear the reverb. Uh, sorry, the delay. So that's what we're working with. So what I want to do is just grab this volume and put it in between these two little no knobs here and here, just a little bit in between, and our feedback level, which is this volume, just bring it up in between these two. Cool. <laughs> We're also going to bring our volume down to 35%. 30%. Don't want to be pushing anywhere near 10, minus 10 decibels for each sound. 
next to the serum. We'll open up our parametric EQ2 and we'll do very similar to what we just did before. So let's go ahead and do that. So steep eight, steep eight, halfway in between. Push this up to around six at 11 and this to two at five. And let's have a listen. So around 1500 Hz, we want 1.5 decibels, 4300 or 4200 we want 4 decibels, and at 11,000 we want 6.5 decibels. Alright, let's have another listen. So together. Now we're just going to bring our serum's volume down to like 35. around minus 14, minus 16 dispels on there. Alright, all together now. Okay, and we'll listen to the mix. Just going to drop the volume down on the kick there to about 85. I'm going to do is go back to our base. Just want it to fill out the sounds. We're going to go to this next module here in this little button. I'm going to open up Stereo Shaper, and there is a preset that I have which is called Stereo Max. Now you're going to want to um, start with Stereo Medium. Now you're going to want to mess around with this a little bit to make it fit perfect stereo. So we'll listen carefully. <laughs> seconds delay here, right, and the phase is left at 40%. Now you notice that that gives it a little bit of left and right expansion, I'm just going to bring this volume right down. What you also should have is these two values sitting right here, and these two values sitting at 5 decibels, 5 decibels, and this is set at 0 decibels for both of these. That will make it sound a lot louder, so you're going to need to bring the volume down, and listen again. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. And we'll listen again. Oh, make sure you re-highlight your chords there. It's going to bring our kick value back to 95. Pretty happy with that. Next thing we want to do now is find the next empty or go to the new pattern and rename it to vocal. Alright. Let's have a look here. Next thing you want to do is just right click the top one and insert a slice 6. It's a standard plugin with Fruity Loops, so you'll all have it. And you're going to want to open the file which is VTD is 3 female phrase 88. Um, from the file in there, and that should be the one that we're going to be using. Now let me just find that myself, because I have, haven't saved it to a good destination. Okay. Okay, maybe that's not the right one. Till I find you. Alright, I'm just going to find the right vocal, and we'll go from there.
go ahead be it oh please don't burn i'm a oh i'm a don't burn bridge i'm a oh your hand hey don't let me go okay so you want to be opening up so what i found is that you need to open up phrase 38 so that's the one that you will have that's what it was like. don't let me go first thing you want to do is add the slice 6 to a mixer channel and bring the volume right down so we got about 40 percent just to see how that works don't let me go cool now we're going to set our chops regions don't, 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 don't let section here everything will stay the same what we actually want to do is put this one to the top so we're going 1200 cents or 12 semitones or it's actually an octave raise so that's fine right click on the plugin piano roll shift 2 to set your length so that's what we're working with So now we have to figure out what we can do. Alright, so what we need to do is figure out what we actually want. So, paste the vocal into the piano roll here, just by making sure you've got it selected. Pop it in, um, double click your chords. We just want to run one set of chords. And we'll run both, uh, we'll run this course. And now we want to try and fit it in respectively. So, top left corner, click here, go to target control, and select note fine pitch. Do not select channel pitch, select note fine pitch. Okay. Alright, so let's bring this up, because we've only got four markers to work with. So you notice here, if we bring it down on this option, this is a full octave, so that's the original. Alright. Let's go back to the song here. going to give one beat free here so let's just find out what the central chord is here here is I'm just pasting in one note which goes through the entire song. I'm not actually going to use this, it's just for reference so you know what you're running with as something that'll work every time. section. Alright, I'm just going to mess around and play with these and then I'll let you know about where to put them. Basically just listening in carefully to see what works, what doesn't, moving it around until we have it right. Alright guys, I'm back and what I've found that works best for well, you can do your own, um, but what I can hear from mine is that... Alright. 
So what you're going to do for the first one is originally it was up here. You're just going to go to the halfway point and you're going to bring it a little bit off pitch. Next thing you do is the next one is going just below here. Make sure that that's the second marker and the third marker is here. The third marker is one above that center line. And then for the rest of them we're going to just go for this marker. We're actually going to get rid of these. First one here is two below the start time. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just click on this marker four, and we're going to exit this piano clip. You can use that by just doing escape. Next thing you want to do is right click on this slice X right here. Right click, and then we're going to go clone. Okay. Next thing you want to do is click on this top bar here and go Control Shift C. That's going to make an instant clone of that. And we're just going to want to get rid of this first option in here. Just going to go right, Control X. And what we're going to have is just the same one here. It's just identical, but we're going to use that for our automations and, and things like that. So Shift 2 to get us set. And first thing actually we're going to do is bring up the Total Dance Sounds here. And we don't, we don't want that at that first bit. So. it just before this first line here just like I have yeah if you haven't got yours set up like this make sure you find the right points where I've got them here so you've got so this is what we want to set up the first time just like this okay we've got any options that'll be fine reopen this one here just have that, and now we're going to go right click into our piano roll here, shift 2 to get us set. So now we don't have that, don't have that intro bit. Alright, so I can control, find pitch, make sure it's set to 2 here, and we're just going to go paste in for this long. Next thing we're going to do is just have a quick listen to see how this is going in. We're actually going to pop, get rid of this first beat here. Okay, and now we can see the two of them together actually match up just like that, but we'll just put them in below each other. So this will be the dry version, um, so we we'll just take the kick, the clap, open up our chords, and take the bass out, so we can just have a listen. Okay, now we want to do for the vocal two is keep going with this one, so... So, so I want to try to have a listen. should be pretty good. So let's have a listen to that as a whole. Very good. Now this is where the fun part starts. So we're just going to turn off our chords right here, make sure our bass is re-highlighted. Just going to go to our mixer channel right here by clicking that button and let's go to our section here. So this is the vocal, this is what it sounds like dry. Not that exciting, but that's fine. So what we do is we just go into go to the first option and select our reverb two and just follow what I'm doing here. It's a little bit 
different instrument than our other ones, so we're just going to get this high, bring it up to the first line here, the low, we're going to go to the first line here, size, we're actually going to leave for now, we'll mess with that, bring the damp up to the second notch as well, and bring our stereo separation to the first notch, and we're just going to bring it down to 40% on our mixer here, and we're going to bring this delay time up to 3 seconds, and have a listen. Let me go. Next thing we're going to do is find, let's see, it's really, actually pretty good, I believe that is, is. Next thing we'll open up our delay 2, and we're going to mess with this one again. So, bring our volume to the first notch, feedback, we're going to leave where it is. Time is still on 3, offset, once again, 204, and have a listen again. That should be pretty good. Alright, let's have a listen. Not bad, not bad. Next thing we want to do is open up a parametric EQ2. And we want to get rid of that nasty low end bog. So, like this, like this. standard, very good. Actually going to boost a little bit here, so right click on that 7, order a steep 8, cut frequency, a little bit of highs and a little bit of mids, so just, just like this, don't need to worry about values too much. Alright, pretty good on that one there. Okay, all we want to do now is do automation for a side chain to get rid of that little of this. It's a little knock in there, a little awkward knock we want to get rid of. Open up an option here, go to some of the words gross beat here, and what you want to do is find your presets. There will be side chain in there. I've got a bunch of my own, but for now we'll just do that ourselves. Drag all these points to the bottom. And we're just going to drag this up to, let's see, let's do 50% tension. So that's basically on this first point here. As soon as you've done the first one, right click in here and drag while holding right click to the top, top corner. Right click and drag and hold. Right click hold, drag to the top corner. Okay. And what we're going to want to do as well is go to this option right here, which is your main percentage for that effect. Right click it and click create automation clip once again right click here create automation clip okay that will bring this into your bottom section here now what we want is that if we have this all the way down that means that the gross speed is not going to be working right here because it's on zero so no gross speed working works and once it hits up all of it's going to go so it's giving you full action what we want to do here is actually bring back just a little bit of that tension. Let's go to 25% and just do the same thing you did before. Right click and drag. Okay, what you notice there is that there is a little bit less knocking sound, but it still is a little bit there, but that's okay. You can fix that by going into our vengeance options here. Now what we're going to do is, is very simple find this automation here, just going to right click in there so we have two, make sure you highlight this option here, and we're just going to drag this to the top and this to the bottom, and we're just going to drag this until we have a little bit less of that knocking, and we'll try again. I'm going to grab your sustain and decay and max them out. it's much 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 less noticeable still a tiny bit there but that'll be okay when we come through to our final mix in here um, just gonna pop on a wee crash and then we can pretty much give it a full full clue on there let me just find a quick crash all right so in the mix in the uh, folder you'll have a VES1 crash 008 
going to double click on that, drag it straight from, from your th thing into the playlist, from your folder into the playlist. Double click it so you bring up this window, go to your in option and just bring it up to, um, let's go 8%, 7, 8%, you will be able to see that in the top corner there, and leave our outs. Make sure that got that double clicked and it's highlighted here. Open up our mixer and just link that to a mixer track. I like to put my effects from 30 onwards because when you do a full project there's a lot of linking going on for each channel. Bring that volume down so we just want to hear that by itself in the mixer. Sorry, in the playlist. You can see it's quite loud so I'll bring that down to about, yeah, around about minus 16. Next thing, open up a reverb too. So bring that in there and just follow what I'm doing here. This will be different from the other ones. Low cut, first notch, high cut all the way up, damp all the way up. Size, we're going to go to this first notch here. And for the stereo separation, we're going to drag it to the left. And we're going to go to that first notch there. Wet, we're going to leave at 50% for now. And, oops, sorry, 50%. And our decay is going to go up to around 8 seconds. And let's have a listen. Let's bring that decay back to 6 seconds and we'll try it again. Very good. Now what we're going to do is grab this and post it just 4, four beats earlier or 1 bar. And then what we do is double click that. No, sorry, we go to the top corner. So let's click, left click that one there. Click on make unique. So that'll make us unique. Double click that. Click on the reverse option right here, and what we're going to do is just remove the in, and we're going to go to the out to 7-8%. Actually, we're going to push that out to about 15%, and what we're going to do is zoom in here, so you can use the scroll button, um, or you can just grab this to drag it in for zoom, and we're going to put this up to the right section, so drag it one bar, one beat this way, so we're going to chop off this top bit, get the slicer, and remove it. If you have tracks and you want to use the uh, sample, you want to use the whole sound and it's a little bit out, press the Alt button, make sure stretch is not selected, press the Alt button, and then move your playlist and you can move it just by the tiniest bit. Okay, so we're just going to recut that. Cool. So now if we listen to the two together, we have... Alright. So let's give the whole mix a go. Hopefully we have made something good. Let's do it. Okay, what we want to do now is just grab all of this. Control C, Control V, leave these bottom parts out. Go across to the next one and put it in just right there. Actually we will take this crash and pop it on there as well. Actually what we'll do is we'll zoom in. We would take out these first two chords here by doing this. Take out this, uh, actually we'll leave that first kick on here and put this crash on this third beat, so three quarters in and we'll see if that sounds good or not. Alright, from the start. Let's take these two bars out as well, and we'll also go to our vocal here and just chop out. Actually, let's zoom in. Let's go to the last two here and the last two here. Let's give it a go. Thanks for watching the tutorial. Please do remember to like this video and subscribe. Share it around if you've got other friends who are trying to learn future bass as well. I've been producing for about six years now, so had my fair share of FL Studio. Made a bunch of new tracks. Um, you can check them out on my channel. Thank you for listening.